Holiday World in Santa Claus, Indiana may be in the middle of nowhere, but this family-run amusement park is one of my favorites in the United States. While this park may not have the quantity of attractions of some of the corporate mega parks, Holiday World focuses on quality and customer service, which are the two things that keep me coming back year after year. So in this video, I will be reviewing Holiday World and explaining why this park should be on your bucket list. Holiday World originally opened in 1946 as Santa Claus Land. Lewis Cook was dismayed that a town called Santa Claus didn't actually have a place where kids could meet Santa Claus year round. So Lewis Cook opened Santa Claus Land, a small Christmas themed park with some children's rides. The park would be passed down generation to generation in the Cook family, and while the park would retain the same family friendly atmosphere and charm, the park would start expanding in the 1980s. In 1984, the Cook family realized the theming possibilities beyond just Christmas, so the park was renamed Holiday World, and that coincided with two new themed areas, one themed to Halloween and one themed to the 4th of July. These new lands were accompanied by an assortment of flat rides and water rides, several of which still operate at the park to this day. The 1990s brought two more influential additions to Holiday World that helped shape the park into what it is today. 1993 saw the opening of Splash and Safari, Holiday World's attached water park. This water park started off small, but it would eventually grow into an award-winning water park that occupies roughly one-third of the park's overall footprint. The water park would receive several award-winning and record-breaking water slides from ProSlide from 2002 onwards, including Zimbabwe, the world's longest enclosed water slide, Zynga, one of the first tornado slides, and a trio of water coasters in Wildebeest, Mammoth, and Cheetah Chase. With such a robust slide lineup, you could make an argument the water park is actually more popular than the amusement park for majority of guests. I have a separate review that goes into more detail on Splash and Safari, but from a high level, this water park is not to be missed. The other influential addition in the 1990s was the Raven, a custom Coasters International wooden roller coaster that opened in 1995. The park previously had a Herschel Kitty Coaster and an off-the-shelf Galaxy Coaster, neither of which was anything special. But Raven was immediately anointed as one of the best wooden roller coasters in the entire world. It put Holiday World on the map with coaster enthusiasts. The coaster won the award for the world's best wooden roller coaster in Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards from 2000 to 2003. Raven was built in the midst of the coaster wars, when parks were going bigger, taller, and faster. But Raven served as an inspiration to small parks worldwide that wanted a headlining attraction without breaking the bank. And Raven spurred Holiday World's future coaster additions over the next two decades in The Legend, The Voyage, and Thunderbird. Today, Holiday World is still owned by the Cook family, and this 125 acre park includes two additional themed lands in Thanksgiving and Holodog's Fun Town. That is a high level overview of Holiday World's history, but if you want an even more in depth look, I strongly recommend visiting the Santa Claus Museum just down the road from the park. This is a free attraction with several displays from the park's history. It feels like a small scale version of the Town Hall Museum you can find at Cedar Point. Holiday World is located in Santa Claus, Indiana which is three hours south of Indianapolis, one and a half hours west of Louisville, and three hours east of St. Louis. Santa Claus is a small town, and Holiday World is the main reason to visit. And one thing to note is that the park and town of Santa Claus are in the central time zone, even though several of the neighboring towns are in the eastern time zone. I strongly recommend visiting the park's Hollywood Nights event open to card-carrying members of select roller coaster clubs and organizations, Hollywood Nights is a two-day event with special walk-back tours of the park's roller coasters, auctions of park memorabilia and used items, lots of food, and exclusive ride time, or ERT, on many of the park's attractions. And much of this ERT occurs after nightfall, so it is the best opportunity to get night rides on the park's acclaimed roller coasters. That's especially the case for Voyage, which runs untrimmed for the event. As I mentioned earlier, Holiday World has five themed areas. However, Holiday World isn't a highly themed park. Each area has some light theming from atmospheric music, 
holiday-themed names, and holiday-appropriate color schemes. But that's not much of an issue that the park is light on theming for me, because the park looks fantastic. Everything always looks to be in tip-top shape, and the park routinely wins awards for its cleanliness. The park is immaculate. Plus, the park has a charm to it, and a majority of the park is wooded. The latter fact is something all the major coasters take advantage of, but it also provides some much appreciated shade on the midways on hot days. The other things that help keep guests cool are the free sunscreen and drinks included with park admission. This is a perk very few parks offer, but it is extremely popular. The largest sunscreen station is located in Splash and Safari by the changing rooms. And then there are drink stations in all areas of the park. It is super nice being able just to walk right up and get yourself a drink with no line, as opposed to most parks where you can be stuck behind a lengthy food service queue. While I'm touching on the drinks, I might as well touch on the food. There are a few food items at Holiday World that I strongly recommend. First is anything at Plymouth Rock Cafe, the Thanksgiving themed restaurant with hearty meals such as turkey and ham. This is one of my favorite meals at any theme park because of the uniqueness and quality. I know a lot of people who also love Holiday World pizza, but it's just okay to me. The park also has an extensive collection of sweets, but I was born without a sweet tooth, so I can't help you out there. Holiday World is renowned for their customer service, and I have had nothing but positive encounters with their employees over the years. They are exceptional. The employees are super friendly and extremely helpful. This is another area where Holiday World routinely wins awards, and I completely understand why. It really makes guests feel welcome. Despite the park's reputation, wait times on the amusement side are usually quite manageable. I have visited on both Memorial Day and Labor Day weekend, as well as other summer weekends, and the longest line I have encountered on the dry side, excluding 2020 due to COVID restrictions, was a half hour for one of the wood coasters. But typically, I've had to wait no more than 15 to 20 minutes for any of the park's roller coasters or rides. The park consistently runs two trains on Voyage and Thunderbird, but they will often run just one train on Raven and Legend. Because the latter two are located towards the front of the park, I strongly recommend coming back to them later in the day, unless you're in one of the first trains of the day before the queue starts building up. Splash and Safari typically sees longer wait times than the amusement side. If you do plan to visit Splash and Safari, and I highly recommend it, I would go there immediately after the water park opens. This is usually an hour after Holiday World opens. I then suggest you try to beat the crowds and knock out all three water coasters as soon as possible. Wildebeest and Mammoth offer some of the best airtime of any water slide, and Cheetah Chase, the park's newest water coaster, is a unique racing water slide. All three slides can get lines exceeding an hour on busy summer days. Although Wildebeest and Mammoth do have single rider lines that can save you some time if you're alone or willing to split up your party. One trick you cannot use at Holiday World or Splash and Safari is entering the queue line right before closing. Holiday World is one of those parks that closes their queue lines early so the last train of the night goes out right at closing time. Just keep that in mind if you're planning the last ride of the night on something like Voyage. Dispatches at Holiday World are usually pretty good, especially since the park allows guests to bring bags and loose articles onto the ride platform. Not only that, the staff actually encourages guests to hand them their belongings to help save time while they're boarding. It's a friendly touch you don't see at many other parks. Moving through the ride lineup, Holiday World only has five roller coasters, but four of them are award winners and some of my favorites. That goes back to the park's focus on quality over quantity. The original wood coaster in Raven is still a ton of fun. This wood coaster may be short, but is a jack of all trades. It's fast paced and has a wonderful setting in the woods. Plus is a few strong airtime moments, particularly on the legendary fifth drop if you're in the back row. And it also has some good laterals too. While it may no longer be the world's best wooden roller coaster, and honestly it's my least favorite wood coaster in the park, it is still a great ride. Legend is another Custom Coasters International creation, and this ride has an argument as the world's best coaster for laterals. You get a mix of abrupt laterals and sustained laterals, particularly on the insane double helix. This coaster also mixes in a few airtime moments, 
holds its speed incredibly well, and also is a lovely setting through the woods. That's a theme with all of Holiday World's coasters. Voyage is the park's signature attraction. One of the first coasters built by Gravity Group, Voyage is a statistical monster. It is the tallest and fastest traditional wood coaster in the world, and it's the second longest wood coaster in the world. But Voyage is not all about stats. It also features one of the best layouts in the world. The first third is like a hyper coaster, with the giant hills and camelbacks. The second third is a twister, with the highly banked turns and twists. The final third feels like a traditional out and back coaster on steroids, with the pacing and transitions. The coaster has a smorgasbord of airtime, over 24 seconds in total, consisting of ejector pops, floater pops, and some sustained floater airtime. The coaster also has elite pacing, as it's always doing something and it never slows down, and it also mixes in some laterals too. Holiday World also takes incredibly good care of this coaster, which is no small feat considering the aggressive layout. I have a separate review on Voyage, but this truly is one of the best roller coasters in the world. The park's only major steel coaster is Thunderbird, the first and only Bolliger and Mabyard launched wing coaster. This coaster complements the park's trio of wood coasters perfectly by doing what those coasters don't. Thunderbird's launch is surprisingly powerful, and the coaster has four graceful inversions, with the latter two being the standouts because of the near misses and hang time. I also have a separate review on this coaster, but has a legit case as the world's best wing coaster. The final coaster is Howler, a small Zamperla kitty coaster, themed to the park's mascot, the Holodog. And yes, adults can ride this one for the credit. Howler is part of Holodog's Fun Town, which is one of two kids' areas at Holiday World. The other is Rudolph's Reindeer Ranch in the Christmas area. These lands may be small, but they're very appealing to kids with their colorful paint schemes, play areas, and ride collection. Beyond the coasters, the most notable ride is probably the Gobbler Getaway Dark Ride. This interactive shooting dark ride from Sally tasks riders with calling, not shooting turkeys. The stylistic and cartoony scenes bring a smile to my face, and all the effects always work, which is why this is a solid overall dark ride. I was fortunate enough to get a tour of this ride on a prior Hollywood Nights, and I also have a separate review in this ride. Complementing the water park are two water rides. Frightful Falls is a fun log flume with a long, dark tunnel at the start, and a decent drop at the end that passes right through the legend. Raging Rapids is a river rapids ride that is actually very weak on the rapids. Instead, it uses geysers and waterfalls to drench guests. Plus, it has some nice western-themed buildings at one point on the course. However, this ride often seems to be closed in my visits to the park. It has only been open half the time for me. Holiday World's flat ride lineup is not particularly strong. The most notable flat ride is a small SNS drop tower in Liberty Launch. This double shot may not offer stunning views or thrilling drops, but it does offer two abrupt pops of airtime at the top. The rest of the park's flat ride lineup consists of your average pendulum and spinning rides, none of which are standouts in my opinion. However, these rides are almost always walk-ons, so they're not bad to hit walking between the signature rides. One of the things I love most about Holiday World is their weather policy. As long as there isn't thunder or lightning in the area, and this can be a problem on Midwest summer days, they will run their attractions in pretty much anything. I have had multiple visits where I have ridden the park's roller coasters in heavy downpours, which is quite the experience. The biggest negative about Holiday World, in my opinion, is the park layout. I understand why the layout is how it is, but it's still a frustrating park to navigate. The park has several dead ends, with most egregious being the long pathway to Thunderbird. The park is also extremely hilly. You enter the park atop the hill, travel down the hill as you make your way through Halloween, and then you have to climb back up the hill to reach Thunderbird. Just know you may have to do a lot of backtracking and hill climbing when you visit this park, but that's really the only warning I have to give you, otherwise I love this park. So do I recommend Holiday World? Absolutely! I love this park's coaster lineup, and the customer service is among the best in the world. I always leave this park with a giant smile on my face. 
If possible, I would recommend visiting during Hollywood nights to maximize your opportunity for night rides, and because of the camaraderie between the other coaster enthusiasts is incredible. In terms of the time needed, I would recommend a full day for Holiday World, especially if you plan to do the water park as well. Just make sure to hit the water park early like I recommended, and you'll be able to avoid the longest wait times, which will later allow you to maximize your rides on the roller coasters. So those are my thoughts on Holiday World, the wonderful family park in Santa Claus, Indiana. Have you been here? Or is this a park in your bucket list? I would love to hear your thoughts about this park down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.